Got record, okay? I am recording. I am recording. I'm in Newport, Wales right now, Corey, by the way. Ten minutes away from where I live. There you go. Uh, and I will say Newport. Because uh, it is Newport, isn't it? And it's, and, and, you know, it doesn't surprise me you're a fighter because I remember when I was growing up, I went to school just down the road in a place called Monmouth. And um, just on the way to flying home from boarding school, it was so easy to get into a fight in Newport. <laughs> I'm talking about the early 80s there because I'm old. But um, I want to, I mean, what does a beautiful woman with the face of an angel um, how how did you <laughs> how did you get into fighting for a living then? Uh, just kind of started off uh, when like when I was about ten ish. Um, I started karate, which I feel like a lot of people obviously uh, venture into as a bit of a hobby. Um, and then the, the gym that I was at started like all the other disciplines of Muay Thai and Jiu Jitsu and boxing. So I started doing all that just to you know I just I love staying active. I've come from a very active family. Um, and then, yeah, by the time I was doing all that, I figured I might as well put it all together and uh, delve into MMA. So let me just take you back through that a bit. So you do karate and it's kind of an athletic pursuit in many ways, really, when you started. Yeah? Or was it because you were having a few fist fights in the playground or not? No, I was uh, I'm a, not, not your stereotypical fighter. I'd always keep to myself. I was the kid that was in the library on a lunch break. So uh, probably not the... Not the most, uh, like you say, stereotypical uh, person to get into it. But yeah, it started off as a bit of a hobby, really, just something to keep active. Um, I come from, like I say, I come from a very active family, so my dad was very big on me uh, being involved in sports and everything. And then um, also he was away with the military a lot, so it was kind of something for, because my mum did it as well, so it's something for us to go and do. Um, so that's kind of how it all kind of started. So active family, dad in the military. So tell me a little bit about how active um, mum and dad were then in, in that sense? Were they very sporty? Yeah, well, obviously, um, so my dad used to run marathons, like, as a youngster, he ran for Wales. Um, obviously What's, ran his the name? Army. What's his name? Uh, Gareth McKenna. Um, Great name. <laughs> yeah, he... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah. He so he he actually he actually had a Guinness World Record for um, but uh, I think he's been beaten since. But he he held the Guinness World Record for running a marathon uh, with I think it was sixty pounds on his back. So um, yeah, so he's, so he, he's, he's a nutter. He's a nutter, basically. Yeah. Basically, yeah, he's nuts. <laughs> but, um, yeah, th that definitely wasn't wasn't my cup of tea. But um, yeah, my mum was doing like karate with my brother at the time, like. Uh, mums and toddlers stuff or whatever and then I ended up going down there and giving that go um and then yeah but I tried every sport up until it up until I found karate I'm just uh, so naturally ungifted that I didn't uh, I mean click with anything so yeah so so it's so in many ways what you're describing perhaps is an evolution into something you found you're good at and that you, that you love and that you obviously have not just the athleticism, but the pain barriers and all those things that come with it. I just, yeah, I'm just a very stubborn person. Mm -hmm. uh, again, I take after my father in that sense. So, uh, yeah, like you say, it's something I really enjoy. And also, I think the, the perks of MMA is obviously you don't have to be necessary like the most, like you look at, you look at the divisions, but you don't have to be the most athletic. You don't have to be the strongest. You, you kind of like, you almost like take your weaknesses and make them your strengths. Um, you know, so like you say, your eyes always saying I'm one of the more technical fighters, and that's because, like you say, I'm very much case by study. I put the time in, I work hard. Like you know, I'm not I'm not necessarily you know, I'm definitely vertically challenged. Uh, but uh, yeah, like you see, like you you can kind of make make the best of what you're given in this sport. So you don't have to be, you know, it's like say I I wanted to do basketball when I was like ten. I think that was the, that was the last time I had a growth spurt. So uh, mm -hmm. that was that was never going to be something I pursue. But um, yeah, like you say, I I think. It's not necessarily because I'm good at it. It's just, uh, it's just something that I, like I say, I, I found I was very passionate about, and um, there was a lot to do with it as well. It's not, I mean, you don't get bored. I think, I think I'm right in saying that you're the first Welsh woman to fight in the UFC. Is that right? What does that mean yeah. to you? What does that mean? Oh, it's a, it's a great accolade. Like you say, um, I don't really pay too much attention to all the, like you know, all, all the stats and the records. Like people spitting facts about like you know my age and Kay's age and stuff I don't really pay too much attention to that because I take everything at a fight at a time but at the same time like you say 
it is it is a great um, opportunity for me, and it's it's a great accolade in terms of um, obviously Wales is such a small small kind of country. Um, there's a lot of talent coming through there at the moment, so it's it's nice for me to be able to join that roster and kind of show everybody, um, you know, there's, there's lots of people to watch out for there. Yeah, no, they're having um, you know, been around quite a few of the Welsh males recently and and spoken to them. Um, that 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 there is talk that there has been a growth spurt for the sport in Wales, that more gyms have opened up, that there's more awareness of it. And that, you know, it's time for a hero or a heroine or, or a champion to come through. A, a moment of panic from Corey McKenna there. You've lost the, lost the audio. <laughs> um, did you, could you yeah, hear sorry. me? Then? Could you hear me? No, I didn't hear, I didn't hear so, a word. So what I was saying that. was, um, having spoken to a few of the Welsh guys recently, they were saying that, there has been a growth sport uh, spurt. There are more gyms opening, and it it feels like the right time for heroes or heroines to come forward, and maybe a champion from Wales to emerge in one of the major MMA organisations, just to help that that next step for the sport in Wales. You know. Yeah, they like say there's there's a lot of people coming through at the moment. Obviously, you've got Mason Jones just won his second Cage Warriors belt. Jack Shaw's on an absolute tear. Um, you know, hopefully I'm, well, uh, I'm going to go out there on Saturday and uh, put on a solid performance. So I think, I think it's going to be, it's going to be great. And like they say, there's, there's a lot of people to watch out for coming out of there and it, the growth is massive. And the Welsh people really get behind the fighters as well. Like, obviously spent a lot of time in England as well. Um, and we were discussing this this morning because uh, obviously you've got Danny with us. He's a American, so he doesn't, he doesn't know the difference between England and Wales. But um, like me and Jack were saying, like, the, the English, they don't, they, obviously they support their friends and everything but it's not as big of a a thing whereas like in MMA uh, in Wales like the MMA community is a lot more close near um a lot of like even like I don't want to say the regular people but the people who aren't as involved with it they get very much behind the fighters yeah. and it's a uh, it's a lot more popular there I'd say well I, I'm down filming joke with Joe Calzaghi tomorrow um for a TV company and you know Joe's not as well known in England as he is in Wales, but in, in Wales, he's like a proper sporting icon, isn't he? You know, Tanny Gray Thompson, like she was a sporting icon in Wales before she even made it big, you know, Paralympics after Paralympics. Like you say, there's a there's huge support for, I mean, when Wales play rugby, it's not just rugby fans, it's grannies and grandchildren and, you know, I, I can say this uh, as a Welsh Italian myself. When Wales beat England at the rugby, everybody's happy for a year. Do you know what I mean? You know yeah. those kind of sporting mores, if you like. Um, yeah. What, what, um, what are your ambitions within mixed martial arts? Obviously, you're very young and, you know, potentially you have another 10 years ahead of you, you know, even longer if you wanted to stay in longer. What are your ambitions in the sport and what have you got going on kind of outside the sport as well that, that takes your interest when you're not fighting or training? Um, so this sport's kind of like take over my life, essentially. Like I'm in the gym from open till close every single day. Um, I started coaching the kids' classes at Team Alpha Male. Um, so I'm very much like everything. I'm all into this. Um, you know, like you say, I'm, I'm very young, so I've got plenty of time. I intend to take it as far as I can. Like, I mean, Uriah's, Uriah's like 40, 41, and he's, he's still playing around with fighting. So I think, I think I've got a lot, a lot of time in the sport and uh, a lot of, a lot of time to kind of make my way through that division, get up in the rankings and uh, show everyone that, you know, if I keep putting in the hard work, I, I do believe I could be the best, uh, you know, the best in the world. What, what have you, um, what have you learnt from Uriah, who I've known to probably since he was in his early 20s? Um, what have you learnt from him um, that really sticks with you the whole time? Um, with him, he's, like obviously, honestly, I could sit here for uh, for hours and talk about Uriah. Like you see, he's, he's one of the most selfless people I know. He puts in so much work to all of the guys. He's so invested in everybody. Um, at times, I think you know it'd be nice to see him maybe take a step back and do something for himself. But um, yeah, he he just works 
really hard like he's he's non-stop he's constantly on the go he's always studying he's always watching and like it's nice to see that passion and drive hasn't died out over the years because like I left school when I was like 15 nearly 16 to train full-time really um really? Uh, yes, yeah, like after GCSEs, I I, uh, I went full time. But like, and every, everyone was constantly saying that, like, oh, you're gonna burn out, you're gonna you're gonna lose that passion. Like, yeah. I, I mean, it, has, it hasn't happened to me yet. And uh, you know, looking at people like Uriah, I, I really, I, I hope to kind of like model myself on him almost. Like you say, he's so so passionate, he works so hard, um, and like he invests so much time into me as well. So I've got you know, I've got all the time in the world for Uriah. So you've got to keep your hair long and do a bit of surfing as well. Yeah, if you're modeling yourself on him. Basically, um, I'm walking around in board shorts and sandals already. So, <laughs> I embarrassingly, I love him so much. I embarrassingly came behind him one day at an event when he was in the crowd, and got hold of his legs and lifted him up, and then realised what I was doing, and um, I think gave him a kiss on 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 his cheek, and like because he he is so lovable, isn't he? And yeah, you know. I remember a, a major incident. I don't know if you've ever talked to him about this, but you remember when his, I think his sister was in a car crash, yeah? Do, do you know? I've heard, I've heard about it. I've uh, never yeah. really brought it up. And, and um, I think it was a car crash or she had cancer and he cut all his hair off her when she had all her hair cut off. It might have been cancer. And um, no, he is, he, you could not be in better hands in my view. You could not be in better hands, you know? No, he, he's, yeah, he's amazing. I've got all the time in the world for yeah. him. He's, uh, yeah, he, he's coming out here on Thursday, so he'll be here. Um, the other thing is, like, you know, pre-COVID, pre-pandemic, it must have been, like, um, you must have been thinking, right, one of my ambitions is to fight in Vegas on a big Vegas card, no? Um, I'm one of those people that, doesn't really care where I oh, fight. For long. Come on, you can't well, say that. Well, I don't. I don't drink. Uh, I don't really party. I don't do any of that stuff. So uh, for yeah, me, but like, Vegas is the fight capital of the world. I just, well, for me, it was more about the promotion, you know. So I'm looking forward to getting in there and uh, you know being in that UFC on that UFC stage. But uh, yeah, no, I've. I feel like Vegas uh, Vegas is maybe a little bit spoiled on me. I feel like uh, really? maybe I don't appreciate it enough. You will. You will. I mean, honestly, I've been going to Vegas probably for about 20... God, I can't remember how long now. When is it? Probably about 23, 24 years to big fights. There have been so many big fights in Vegas. And, and you know, it's interesting that, you know, perhaps because you're so interred in the sport you're so interred in your training and your and your dedication to it that it like you say it doesn't matter where you fight and it's not going to be in front of twenty thousand people at the t-mobile it's it's at the apex isn't it so it's only going to be 50 people in there um so i suppose yeah. it could be anywhere really couldn't it yeah maybe like you say the experience is a little bit different to the covid but uh even, even if it wasn't i think it'd be the exact same i'd end up chilling in the hotel with my teammates before the before the fight I'd go out there fight I'd come back and uh you know I think after contenders we had some we had some cookies some cold brew and then we went to bed at like 10 p.m so uh <laughs> there's nothing I, 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 yeah I, I, I have I, a wild I, life yeah no I just I just I didn't mean Vegas for for the sin city element I meant Vegas for the historicity of the place more than anything do you know what I mean of of, of the fight nights that have been there yeah. um Finally, and I could talk to you for hours, you're fascinating. Um, is the, the fact you told me that you, that you left school at, after your GCSEs, you may have a message here for other people because, you know, I mean, we're often encouraged to do your A-levels, go to uni, try and find a career through education. Did you, did, did, did you, were you not comfortable in a classroom studying? Because there's a lot of people that are kinetic obviously you're a kinetic person you know a lot of people suffer from the hyperactivity a lot of young people and they find a much more comfortable way of living when they're out moving or i don't know in a factory doing something they're like making or being mechanical or you know have you got a message for for people who perhaps feel a bit like you did that wanted to leave straight after their gcse's to pursue the thing that they feel is their calling. So I was actually the complete opposite. I was a massive 
book nerd. Like I say, I'd be, I, uh, but once I hit about 13, 14, like my, my lunch breaks, I'd be in the library doing my homework so that I could go straight to the gym after, after school. Yeah. Um, but like, I, you know, I always got like, I always got straight A's. I was always, uh, like hitting the books. I've, like, I've been reading, reading books, like as, as my downtime pretty much since I was, since I could, well, since I was little, like, I think my nan bought me the entire Harry Potter series at the age of two. So I've kind of always actually been very studious, which if anything meant people were very, very more, I had a lot more pushback in terms of taking the conventional route. So everyone's like, yeah. oh, well, why would you waste it? Like, go do this. Yeah. Um, no, I, I'm very much like, my dad very much supported me, very much encouraged me to do it. Um, and I take the same belief that if there's something you're very passionate about and there's something you want to do, like, everything else will always be there. Um, you know, whether it's, whether, whether it's like, you know, like you said, the conventional route, taking, taking your A-levels, taking university, that is always there. Like, if there's something that you want to do, like, you might as well put 100% into it, commit to it, because you never know when the opportunity is going to come back up. You never know when the opportunity is going to split. Like, like, I always used to use it as a counter argument. So everyone would be like, oh, well, what if you got injured? What if this went wrong? What if that went wrong? And I'm like, I'm like, okay. But I could sit back, take the conventional route, and then something could go wrong, and I've missed my exactly. opportunity to kind of get go in there and make those gains. So um, for me, like, I, I don't believe in conforming and following what other people do i think just if there's something you want to do just jump straight in at the deep end and give it 100 percent. final thing then what's have you uh, recommend a book we should all be reading not the harry potter series if you can think of another one right now i know it's always a pain in the ass when people ask you <laughs> for a book isn't it um, no, nothing springs to mind i'm currently halfway through the game of thrones series uh, so that's it's actually pretty good. What are you on? I'm on uh, Niccolo Machiavelli, The Prince. You've heard of Machiavelli, yeah? Um, uh, yeah, it it's, quite, well. it's quite a good book, yeah. But I'm not a big reader myself because I can't sit still long enough. Um, <laughs> um, it's, it's great for me between the three sessions at the gym. I, uh, I'll read a chapter or two and then it's good. So, listen, yeah, I'm halfway through the Game of Thrones. Oh, brilliant. Listen, it's, um, it's an absolute pleasure to speak to you. Go well on Saturday night. Bring the W back to Wales, you dragon. Yeah, go breathe some fire in that octagon. Um, thanks very much for taking the time speaking to me. Appreciate it. No worries. Thank you very much. It's nice to meet you. You too. Cheers, Corey. Thank you. Bye. Thank you very much. Cheers. Thanks, bye. Thank thanks. you. Thanks, Annika, as well.